to shake off whatever little chill, whatever little restriction, and come and praise the Lord with me. Amen. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will dance like David dance. When the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will dance like David dance. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the 
we give you the glory. We thank you for just simply being you this morning, God. And we know that we are children of yours and that we can come to you whenever we need. And that alone is the best reassurance that we can have. We worship your name this morning and we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, oh God. We worship.
The Bible says in Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hands. Hallelujah. Aren't you so proud to know that you are a child of this God? We have no right to fear. We have no right to worry. Because we have a God that is in control. And he will take it all for us. All we have to do is give it to him this morning. Oh, we worship you, God. We thank you.
break every chain to break every chain break every chain break every chain there is power there is power in the name of Jesus we believe there is power in the name of Jesus there is Break every chain, break every chain to reign, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army, there's an army rising up. There's an army.
break every chain. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble. in this place right now is one that's going to bring you peace in a restless situation 
I just feel like the Spirit of God is so full this morning. I feel like there's no space for anything else. There's, there's no space for baggage. There's no space in this room for burdens. There's not even any space for chains, whatever you came in with this morning. Just, just imagine that the Spirit of God is so thick and dense in this building that not even a demon can come close. Just imagine for a minute that His Spirit is so, so dense. I just feel like the Spirit of God is dense. There's a weight. There's a weight in this place, a weight. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, let's just lean into that. Lean into that feeling, to that notion that God is here and that anything that you came in with today, just declare it in the name of Jesus. It's gone. It's gone. Just declare it in the name of Jesus. Whatever I walked in with, whatever troubles I walked in with this morning, in the name of Jesus, by the blood and resurrected power of Jesus Christ, it's gone. It's gone. We rebuke it from our presence. We rebuke every spirit, every devil, every demon, every notion, every attack, every weapon that was formed against your church. In the name of Jesus, we declare it null and void. That no weapon formed against your church will prosper. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that every demon that has been coming against your church that's bringing in a, a spirit of fear of anxiety in the name of Jesus go in the name of Jesus go every spirit of infirmity we declare it in the name of Jesus go every spirit of depression in the name of Jesus go Jesus, we just lean into your Holy Spirit, oh God. Holy Spirit, just, just move. Just do your work, oh God. You are the one who makes the darkness tremble. You are the light that is set on a hill. Nothing can extinguish your flame. No weapon formed against your church, against your lighthouse will prosper. You are set on a hill and you will draw all men to yourself. In the name of Jesus, we just declare your voice, your name, your truth. In the name of Jesus, come on church, just lift up his name. Just shout it out. Just declare it, Jesus. There's nothing too big for him. There's no weapon too big for him. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. We free it in the name of Jesus. Every chain we declare broken in the name of Jesus. Every burden lifted in the name of Jesus. Every yoke broken in the name of Jesus. By my stripes, somebody declare it right now. He says, by my stripes. Hey, Korobo Sata, I feel it right now. Declare it, declare your healing right now. He says, by my stripes, by my stripes, by my stripes, by my stripes. Reach out and take it, take it, take it, take it. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Hey, Korobo Sata. Somebody say, Jesus, Jesus. Darkness If anybody just wants to come up to the altar, claim your healing, claim your victory, claim your release in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God is right here in the name of Jesus.
We break the chains. We break the chains. We break the chains in Jesus' name. The power of the living God. The power of the living God. Fall upon your people. Fall upon your church. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, anointing. Come and break the chains. Come and break the yoke. Oh, God, deliverance. Oh, my God, deliverance, deliverance. In every dimension, in every area, we claim it. We claim the power of God in our lives, in our church, in our families. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Break those chains in Jesus' name. You're the chain breaker. You are the chain breaker. You are the sin deliverer. Hallelujah. You are the body healer. Heal the body. Heal these bodies. Heal these bodies. Today, let there be healing in the house. Healing in the house. Healing in the house. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we say yes. We exchange our sorrows and our pains for the joy of the Lord. Yeah, the joy of the Lord become our strength today. Not a person leaving this house untouched. Touched by your power. Touched by your goodness, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Give God some praise. Give him some praise, church. God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. As we get ready to collect the offerings, you may have your seats. And as they start collecting, I'll just say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we just bring this token of thanks into your storehouse, oh God. For everything that we have, we declare is because of you, God. It's because of your goodness and your mercy. So we, we gratefully give it back to you, oh Lord God. And with, with a full heart, God, we want to just declare that you are our God and that this is our, our ministry collectively, reaching one another, building one another up in the name of Jesus. For it's the church that you have established, oh God. And that we joyfully contribute into your kingdom, God. Both spiritually and monetarily, oh God. We pray that you see each and every giver that gives a token of thankfulness into your kingdom today, oh Lord God. That you would receive it and that you would bless it. Bless it to their benefit and bless it to the church's benefit. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. 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 Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified.
What happens in church doesn't normally happen in your home. That's the difference between your house and the church. So when the church come together, the Lord promised to be with us. To bring a word from the Bible itself, a verse of scripture which we want to do. Pastor Kimber want to give that text just before I continue with the thing. Thank you guys. You're dismissed. What a great job. Oh my God. Because what happened today is not by accident. As I was preparing for church this morning, my meditation Lord took me to the dedication of Solomon's temple. And if you ever read that, the power that was in that place when Solomon dedicated the temple and it was just, just a height, is, is that, that the, the, so it was so thick, as you said, the power was in that church and then God responded. And this is the text he wanted me to share with you today. And as pastor came and put us in circles, let me share this with you and I get out the way. But I had to share it because the Lord showed me that, again, this was what happened today needed to happen. He said, if my people to call by my name, to humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Now my eyes shall be opened and my ears attended upon, upon the prayer that is made in this place. Listen to it. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house. Hallelujah. That my name Ooh. may be there forever. Yes. My eyes and my heart should yes. be there perpetually. Yes. It was not no Hallelujah. accident. This church is turning, turning. God is getting ready to do something miraculous. Hallelujah. He's missed the bus. Praise his holy name. Woo. Thank you, Pastor. Um, in giving thanks to the folks, let me just thank Simon and his team for the last three Sundays of carrying the worship. That's hard. That's tough. And their team did a marvelous job bringing us every day, every Sunday into the presence of the Lord. Thank you, guys. And thank you for our... You see, we have two teams, and none is better than the other. Get that in your head. None is better than the other. The anointing is what makes the difference. The presence of the Lord is what makes the difference. So we don't compete and we don't compare. We just praise the Lord for our two teams. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, I get quickly to some announcement for the preacher who is bubbling and ready to come. It's uh, 11.08 and so we have a little time. But I, I need this time. It's in-house thing that I have to do. Uh, we, adults were not supposed to do anything today. Just the young Adults carry the whole service beginning to end, but I, I unfortunately, I have to come in and jump in. Um, I want to welcome uh, Sister Louise O'Connor, who's moving to Jamaica back and forth, and whenever she comes six months after or five, she's here. Clap, clap for, for such faithfulness because she follows us. Hallelujah. I uh, want to introduce a couple to you that you have not officially met. This young lady has been coming to the church for many years and a mom. She's a flight attendant and when she's in town, she makes sure and come. And if she can't come on Sunday, she passes by and drops drop off her, her tithes and her mother's tithes. tithes. And, and, and I, I just love Cassandra. Cassandra is a beautiful young lady. And she just got married to Mr. Beaumont. Could you welcome this couple? Stand up, please. Let's welcome. They, they belong to us and you don't know that. So I want you to to recognize them and know them. A beautiful couple, beautiful wedding, and thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Could you put up the clip on the rent for me, please? In case you have been falling behind on your rent, uh, whether it's COVID or flood, uh, Brother Tommy sent this to us, and uh, you can get more information from him if you can't see it properly there. Uh, visit ocfl.net rental assistance for more information. So you go to the OCFL, Orange County, Florida.net rental assistance, and they will guide you, and you can get some help if you need that help. Thank you for that clip. I don't know if you have the other clip text to give, but um, we have a, a, a PayPal was very expensive, 
that you see there, we have it in print because you can't remember the information there. This is mainly for people who are watching the program because there are people from England and the Caribbean and Canada who wants to give us some offering, but they have no way to give it. So this is really for outsiders. We want you to continue either mailing your check or bringing it or dropping it by. And if you can't, then you can use this. It's only $2 uh, on your behalf. So it's the cheapest one. And thank you, Becky, uh, for getting us here and Janice and Sally for helping us. It's, it's out there. The information is there on the on the table outside and um, so it's called text to give and um, it's very easy you have the instructions here the dollar amount you wish to give can be text to 84321 click on the link type in our zip code here 34761 DLA will be the first one displayed you can proceed in a way that's similar to an online checkout you will also be given the option to set up a recurring monthly gift if you so wish so making uh, giving easy for those who are outside. Praise the Lord. Can I hear? Uh, thank you, Jesus, for, for text to give. Praise the Lord. Um, we are doing a monthly newsletter because we tried the email and that's not working. We laboriously, Sally will spend two, three hours every Monday to make sure the same thing goes out, but praise the Lord, we understand. So we have this Last month and this month and, and every month we'll be putting out. We, we would like your, your idea, anything else we can do to improve this call, Sally, and tell her. But for, for birthdays, John Etienne, as you see, had his birthday on the 1st. Michael Fraser on the 4th. And on Wednesday, my brother, CEO outside there, turned 65. That's a big number and we want to <laughs> let him feel 65 is a good number. Hallelujah. Amaril Batiste was on the 5th and Lauren Moorhead was on the 6th. And tomorrow, Sally will be having her birthday. So the rest of the birthdays are here for you to see, uh, anniversary and so forth. So thank you so much for celebrating people, giving them a call, and encouraging their hearts. I'm almost done. Wednesday night prayer and Bible study is going great. We have some great teaching. We want you to come on. You can come on. If a brother from Guyana can come on, and from people, 10 people from New York can come on, you can come on. Amen. I want you to come on. I want you to come and pray. This is our midweek prayer meeting. Anything that is doable, do it. Now is the time to do it. Now is the time. We, 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 are, we are in perilous times. And I firmly believe in prayer. And also now the church has been always this, but we're emphasizing the church here is open Monday to Friday. From 10 to 3, for anybody who want to come in and pray, come down to this altar, one or two, come, make a friend. And we had some covenant partners uh, three or four weeks ago where we asked you to, to find a prayer partner. My wife found a prayer partner and she prays with that prayer partner every day. And uh, so make sure you keep your commitment. Don't let it fall. Don't let it slip. Keep on praying. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, fishing trip. November 5, first Saturday of November, fishing trip. Sign up, see John, Etienne, and get some fish. Um, this fella went to fish and he didn't catch any fish. So he went to the fish shop and he bought a big fish. And he told the lady, throw the fish for me. So I can say, I catch this fish. <laughs> so if you don't catch anything, don't worry. Buy one and tell them, you know, let them throw it to you. You, you, you caught one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Two more things and I'm done. But Desmond, would you kindly come up here, please? And while Desmond is coming up, you know, there's disaster everywhere and we cannot meet everybody's need. Foursquare is doing a great job right now in the city. They have truckloads of water and bread and they're just giving out to the area. You know, UCF was in a bad, bad state. I saw cars flooded and floating right on the compound. So we have local uh, problems, but we also have good government help and we thank God for that. Uh, praise the Lord for FEMA and for all those. But this, I want to... Um, raise an offering at the end of the service, a benevolent offering for a pastor who I knew and still know back home. 
He has a, a small church, but a faithful man and his wife. And he lived in a little hut behind the, the church. But the flood came, drowned out the church, drowned his house. His bed is floating. He has three little children. He has no place to go because everybody else is in the same condition. He's been begging on Facebook. Nobody has given him anything. Every, he said, Pastor, everybody's praying for me, but nobody's helping me. So I would, I, I would love for us to do a little something. It's not big. You don't have to, to go all the way out. But a little something, if you can give, make it to Deeper Life, we'll get it over to him. Tomorrow, his, his wife also has cancer. And she has to get three tablets, which is expensive. And if she doesn't take those tablets with her to the doctor, he will not perform whatever he has to do. She must take those tablets. And so he said, Pastor, I don't have, and I have nobody else to ask. Can you ask your church for a little help? I said, I will try today. And I know you have never left us down. So at the end of the service, be so kind. Write a little something um, for that offering. Would you do that, please? Let's do something for somebody. Some, so he's a pastor and, and a good man I know. Now, what you see on the screen here brings me great pride, great joy. Because what it says here, you can't see the top, the thing is blocking. Mr. Desmond Langston, your book is the number one bestseller in several categories today at Amazon.com. Several categories. This is an honor. Let us stand and honor this man. I am privileged. We are privileged to have, you know, very few people could do that. In several categories, not just in, in, in one, in theology, but in in. in, in I have it somewhere here. In, in, in three categories. <laughs> so you, you ought to congratulate him and uh, bless him. I know how hard he has worked. It took him five years to get here. Rewriting that, rewriting, resubmitting, sending out books and getting feedbacks. And I am so honored that I had the privilege to write on the back cover uh, something about it. Thank you, Des. You want to say anything? Well, for one thing, I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> and everything in the book is a representation of what you have taught me. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about the fees. The fees, well, I've already um, made it public that all the proceeds go to the church, so that's it. Did you hear that? Yeah, what you all can do. You know, when you make number one, it's just a moment in time. And um, the categories is based upon the first hundred. So five categories, it means that at one point in time, that was the book that was uh, bought and downloaded the most. So 500 people. But what drives the sales is reviews. So the more reviews it has, is the more Amazon picks it up, and when they pick it up, then they begin to promote it globally. So in preparation for that, what I've done is I've already translated it into Spanish, French, and Italian. <laughs> and and um, as we speak, um, it's being translated in, in, in Tagalog, and then Portuguese, and I don't know what other language is going to be next. But the thing is that um, if you give it to them in their language, the likelihood of them reading it um, is increased considerably. So 7.4 billion people in the world, who knows where it will go. But what would drive it would be reviews. So I'm going to be running a promotion, which part you can get a copy of the book for free. And if you all can get in there before somebody else, you can download it and then write a review, put it on Amazon. And when that sales come in, then the church benefits. Right Amen. All the sales. It's 99 cents for the e download, uh, but uh, the hard copy is a little more. But whatever you heard him say, I didn't know that, that he's donating all the proceeds to the church. <laughs> wow. Let's, let's bless him. Let's pray for success over his, his, his effort, his hard work. Father, we commit this servant to you and we thank you with gratitude for his heart and his love for you and the kingdom. 
You have given him knowledge and wisdom and he have put it in print. Oh Lord, give it wings. Give it wings in every language. Make it a real Pentecostal book. In every language may they hear this word. I bless him. The church bless him. We appreciate him and we ask you to honor him as he honors you. Together we believe and say amen. 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 Thank you, Des. Thank you, Thank you brother. Apart from being a hard worker, we wish you best success. Okay, I think we're ready for the word of God. It's 1121. I want you to uh, get ready for a special word from a special servant who has suffered much um, to, to bring this word. I, I, I know his life. I know him from the time he was born. Uh, he loves the Lord. He seeks God. He knows the word. He's an expository preacher. And a thrilling uh, position for a young man to be in. So we, we thank God for him. And I want you to support him as you've always done. Because he will bless your heart. Put your hands together for Minister Jason. As he comes. Thank you, Pastor. How's everybody doing? Right. Just bow your heads as I open with a word of prayer. Father, help me. Amen. Sometimes that's all you need to say. You don't need too many words. This morning, I want to talk about a text. My text is taken from Luke chapter 8, verse 43 to 48. Give you a second to get there. Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any. She came from behind and touched the border of his garments. That's Jesus she's speaking about. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those around him said, Master, the multitudes are so many, one of them may have touched you. And he said, no, it's different. Who touched me? Somebody touched me for I have perceived power going out from me. Now when the women saw that she was not hidden anymore, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in his presence of all the people around the reason why she touched him. And she was immediately healed. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Now go in peace. This is, as we just read, this is only five or six verses but there's a lot to say in those five or six verses. And my topic this morning is, tell God your issue and he will deliver you. Tell God your issue and he will deliver you. This woman had an issue. The Bible says she was an unnamed woman. They called her a certain woman who was suffering with an issue for 12 long years. She was an outcast. She was living in pain. She was living in shame. She had a burden to carry day after day, night after night, year after year. This is not a one-day sickness. This wasn't a two-weeks COVID for her. This was her life for 12 years. There wasn't any medicine that worked. There wasn't a shot she can get. There wasn't a booster for her. She has tried everything. And nothing has worked for 12 long years. By law, she had to distance herself. Talk about social distancing. She had to distance herself from everything and everyone. For 12 years, if she had a family, the Bible didn't say, 
12 years you can't see your family. 12 years you can't be next to your loved ones. 12 years you can't hug somebody close to you. 12 years you can't have a relationship. You're by yourself. 12 years. That's a long time. I don't know what your issue is. But that's my question today. And I want you to ask yourself this as the sermon continues. As we look into these five, six verses, ask yourself, what is my issue? Everybody has an issue. Everybody has a situation. Everybody has a problem. Don't tell me you don't have a problem. If you do, then your issue is lying. Everybody has an issue, today, especially today. The times that we live in, the things that are happening. There's issues all around us. But you know what's the good thing about this? She suffered for 12 years. She didn't suffer forever. I want to tell you that your suffering is only for a certain amount of time. Your suffering has an end date. Your suffering has to stop. Your suffering is going to come to a complete stop one day for you soon. Everybody has their time. You may be 11 years and 9 months into your suffering and you only got a few more to go before everything stops and things start happening for you and things start changing for you. The past is the past. So what is your issue this morning? I want you to think about it. I want you to to realize, what have I been bleeding from? What have I been suffering from? What is it that's been hurting me? It's been hurting me so bad, and it's been infecting me so bad, that I can't tell nobody. They can't experience what I'm going through, because I can't have a relationship with anybody. They don't understand me. They never had this problem before. They don't know what it is to get up. And face a day like I have to face day after day, night after night. What is your issue? What is it? What is it that's been holding you? What is it that you've been bleeding from, from the inside? What is it? For 12 years. For 12 years. Now let's let's, let's flip this. Let's try to make spiritual applications to this. She waited for, she was suffering for 12 years. She was sitting in a mess for 12 years. She was hurting for 12 years. Some believers, not all, but some. Some believers wait too long in their mess before they come to God. Some believers sit in the filth, in the sin, in the nonsense that's been going through them, in the plague in their mind, and in the negativity that they think, and day after day, they sit in it. They wait too long. They wait year after year. They wait, they wait, they wait. Well, God's going to show up, and God's going to come touch me. You're going to see something different coming up. We wait for God to come to us. In certain situations, we sit there knowing what's the issue. She knew what her issue was. And she sat there. We don't have to stay in our messy situations. We don't have to live all the time in the life, in the things, in the situations that are making us emotionally And physically bleeding us. The Bible said. She had spent all. That she had. That means at one point she had something. She had spent all. Now for 12 years. She had her money. She spent all. To not one physician. Not two. The Bible says she tried multiple. She tried different remedies. And that's what we do today. We try different things. We try to go outside the box. We try to go outside the Bible. We try to go outside the church. And finally, it was all dried up. All her money was gone. And the Bible said, they left her worse 
than when she came to them. They took what she had and there was no solution to give to her. Sorry, that's my throat and a little sip of holy water right there. The reason why I know it's holy is Brother Jerry prayed for it before I got up here. The doctors made her situation worse. Do you understand? Let me, let, me, let me try to say something to you. Maybe you might understand. Maybe you won't. But have you ever gone to somebody with a problem thinking they will help you and they made it worse? Have you ever gone to people, a family member, a friend, a boss, a neighbor, a fiance, a boyfriend, a girlfriend with a serious issue and they made it worse? Be careful who you go to for your, for your delivery, deliverance, for your help. You can't go to ungodly people. You can't go to people that don't know Jesus. You can't go to those type of people for a miracle help. Amen. And things got worse. What is your issue? Identify it this morning. Bleeding. There's so much bleeding going on in the churches today. Spiritually bleeding. That's that bleeding is you're, you're losing something. The church is bleeding. Attendance is dropping. Tides is decreasing. Bleeding in certain areas. But there's a way that we can stop the bleeding. There's a way that you can get up from your situation and improve it. First, you have to get fed up. You have to tell yourself, how long? How much longer can I go like this? I already spent all. Some of us think, you know, we got a lot of money in the bank. I worked hard for it. I earned that. I, that's... That's my degree that I, I paid my money for. I work hard for that promotion. I deserve what I have in the bank. That is mine. I worked for it. One issue. Look, God, look, look, look at Fort Lauderdale. Those multi-million dollar houses on the beach. One Ian. One storm and everything is wiped out. Everything, there's pictures of Porsches and Lamborghinis covered underwater. Million dollar houses on the beach, destroyed. Everything they had. Don't think just because you have a little backup, just, just because you have a little something that you are going to be okay. One, one issue can take everything away from you. Praise God for what you have. That's why you say, Lord, I thank you for what you're giving me. I commit it back unto you, oh Lord. I commit my body back unto you, Lord. I commit my family back unto you. Whatever you have. Because one instance, you can lose it. She got up. She was fed up. Look what she did. She was not allowed... To go by people. She was not allowed to be a certain distance from you. and I. She had to be separated. She was an outcast. But somebody was passing by. She heard about a man. She heard about a guy that can heal. She heard about what he's done for others. She heard about his miracles that he has performed before. She heard... Let me tell you something. You know what, what's a good thing to do? Is tell people about Jesus. That's right, that's right. Spread the word. You don't know what that person is going through. You don't know when they're going to get up from their mess and say, hey, let me try what this brother was telling me for 10 years. Let me try. Let me attend a church service one time and see what can happen. Let me open up the Bible and see what God is saying to me. You don't know what the power of your word that somebody you met, thank you, God bless you. Hey, Jesus loves you. Hey, I know you tried everything before. I know, I, I know, 
I know you go to temple. I, I know you do this. But hey, if you have a Sunday, come, 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 come to church with me. Hey, if you have a question about the Bible, let's, let's, let's read a book together. And if you have a question, we'll try to figure it out. And if I can't answer it, I'll get somebody to answer it. Telling somebody about God. She heard your words of encouragement, your text, your friendly smile. You extending the hand. That is how people understand they see the Christ in you. They see who you are. They see a difference. She heard that Jesus was passing by. And there was a multitude of crowds following Jesus. What crowd are you following? What group are you following? There's certain, all kinds of groups out there. There's a bunch of people following Jesus. If you're going to follow somebody, follow Christ. We have a hundred followers on Facebook. Half of them people you don't know, but we follow them. Half of this stuff they put up is rubbish, but we follow them. Give me a like and a follow. And you have no clue who that person is. But you like and you follow. And here's somebody you know that died on the cross for you. Here's somebody you know that opened the eyes of the blind. Here's somebody that you know that woke Lazarus from the dead. Here's somebody that died and was in a tomb for three days and rose again. If you're going to follow somebody, follow Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. The crowd, she didn't care about the crowd anymore. She didn't care. You know why? Because the burden was overwhelming. Don't wait. Don't wait. You're only hurting yourself. Don't wait till you can't take it anymore and you're going mad. Don't wait. Get up. Don't worry about what people may think of you. People looked at her and they scorned her. She was supposed to be away. Don't let people hold you back from God and from God delivering you. Don't let people stop you from coming back to DLA. Don't let people stop you from getting closer to your God. Because the closer you get to him, the faster your miracle is going to happen. Somebody say, I'm coming closer to God this morning. Hallelujah. The bleeding has got to stop. What is your issue this morning? Hallelujah. The crowd. Things that will normally block you. Push it away. Situations that is going to be between you and God. Push through it. There are circumstances. There are going to be times when family members... When best friends, when certain groups you have, you're going to have to push through that because your eyes is not on them. You want what's in front of them, and that is Jesus. This is where she's trying to go. This is where she's trying to push through. This is where she had to stretch. And when you stretch, stretching is not easy. Stretching is coming out of your comfort zone. Nobody stretches like this. When you stretch, you make an effort. When you stretch, it costs you something to stretch. Like when Jerry stretches, he pulls every muscle in his body. He knows what I'm talking about. It costs you something. It's not easy. She had to make that effort. She had to reach... I don't know where you're at right now. I don't know if you're fed up yet. I don't know if you figured out your issue here yet. But when you do, you got to stretch. Then the Bible said, immediately. Immediately? Immediately. Not 12 more days or 12 more hours. He didn't say go home and take, take this medicine for two weeks and come back and see me. He said immediately. She felt it. Oh, my God. Somebody, you're going to get an immediate blessing today. You're going to get an immediate healing today. You're going to get an immediate delivery today. Say, my God is an on-time God. I waited long enough. I have suffered long enough. I have bled long enough.
enough. I have hurt long enough. I have cried long enough. Today, immediately, oh God, somebody say, it's happening today. Jesus is passing by. Do not waste your opportunity. Immediately, she was healed. Immediately, she got up. They couldn't look at her the same way anymore. Oh, she didn't have to be ashamed where she went. She didn't have to care about who she touched. She could have hugged anybody she wanted. She could have gone and eaten anything she wanted. She was just like everybody else. Immediately. When God is ready to bless you, when your time of suffering is about to come to an end, he doesn't slowly bring you into your blessing. He doesn't give you one day a little more strength, one day immediately. That's the type of God he is. Your time of suffering is almost over. Immediately something good is going to happen to you. Your strength is going to be renewed. Your mind is going to be renewed. The bleeding is going to stop. I'm closing with this. It has only five verses. In the beginning, a certain woman, an unnamed woman, that's what the chapter started off with. Watch how the chapter ends. An uncertain woman came to Jesus. Now after Jesus has touched her, he called her daughter. Before you were touched by God, before some people today, they, they don't have a name. Their name's not written down anywhere. But until the master touches you, until you touch the master, your name changes. You are no longer a stranger. You are no longer an outcast. You are a son. You are a daughter now. She is no longer a certain woman. She is no longer an unnamed woman with the issue of blood. Now she is daughter. Go. Be joyful. Come on now. Some of you, you're going to have to get joyful this week because it's going to stop for you. That's what he said. Go. Go. Be of good cheer. Stop sulking anymore. You are not the same person anymore. Don't think like that anymore. You have changed. I have delivered you. Be happy. Send a smile. Send a hug. Do something. Now he said, last words. Go. How did, she, how did he tell her to go? After she got her healing, after now she's a daughter, go in peace. Don't go show off. Don't go get your attitude now because you're better than some of them who's still beating. Don't do that. Go in peace. The same way you heard about Jesus, go tell somebody what Jesus did for you. Go and make peace. Hallelujah. I want to say a prayer with you. If you have an issue, if you were bleeding spiritually, mentally, physically, whatever other leads there is, God has an immediate answer, an immediate fix. When God says stop, it has to stop. When God said that's enough, enough is enough. If you have an issue this morning that you've been dealing with, you have a financial issue, you have a physical issue, you have a people issue, you have a lying issue, you have a drinking issue, you're having marital problems, whatever your issue, come, stand to your feet this morning. I want to pray with you. Identify your issue. And bring it before a God who is passing by. Jesus was passing by to go heal a 12-year-old girl that just gotten sick. She just got sick. Jesus is going to go heal her. You've been suffering for 12 years. Where are you going? Whoa, whoa, Jesus, don't go there yet. Touch me first. I've been suffering for 12 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you want that touch from God, close your eyes. Identify your issue. You don't got to blur it out. But push through the crowd in your mind. Push through the negative thought. Push through the naysayers. Push through it. Lord, I bring your people 
Your crowd here this morning, oh God. Your loved ones here. Your daughters and sons, oh God, have an issue. Lord, we need an immediate touch. There are some that has been suffering for too long. And they made the attempt. They made the prayer request. They stood up. And you know their hearts this morning, oh God. Lord. That issue, whatever it is, we are stretching at your garments, oh Lord. We are stretching. If only we can get a touch, oh God. If only, oh Lord, we touch you. Oh God, help us this morning. Feel the touch, oh God. Feel the cry. Feel the hurt. Feel the pain, oh God. Heal this morning. Deliver and tell us it'll be okay, oh God. Give somebody a testimony today, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God loves you. And your issue is no longer. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
God's really done in this place. If you go back out with the same mindset that you came in with, nothing's going to change. If you don't believe it and have the faith, Jesus said it was by your faith. There's no magic in a touch. There was no magic in his garment. Hey, it's your faith. It was her faith. You have the same faith. You got to go with the same faith. There's no magic garment. There's no magic altar. There's no magic water. It's in your faith. We don't have to come and bring blood sacrifices. It's in your faith. I'm going into a new season. This week I'm going to claim something. This week I'm going to walk into something. I'm walking into a new season. And it's not about pumpkin spice. It's not about everything nice. I'm walking into a season of victory. I'm walking into a season of healing. I'm walking into a season of peace, of tranquility. Hey, the enemy's been coming at my mind for year after year. But no, I'm going into a new season. A season solidified by the presence of God where a hedge of protection is around me and my family. Hey, I claim it in the name of Jesus. Somebody claim it. Claim it. This is my time. Immediately, things can change. Hey, he doesn't need 12 years to change things. You might have been suffering in a season for 12 years, but he can turn it around in an instant. I believe it in the name of Jesus. I believe it. And I'm praying for you, church. I'm praying for each and every one of you this morning, God, that you will walk into a new season. A new season's season of deliverance, of blessing, of prosperity, and of fulfillment. I pray that this time would be the last time that you have to pray the same prayer that you've been praying for 12 years. Hey, she never had to pray that same prayer again. She never had to ask for that same healing again. Let today be the last time you made that prayer. Let today be the last time. I believe it in the name of Jesus. At this time, as we start to close off the service, I don't want to forget the benevolence offering if the ushers can get ready and as we prepare our hearts to give unto others I pray that the Lord would recognize this almost as a testimony to your blessing remember this offering this gift as as a token as a declaration as you walking into a new season as in, in, in a new phase to a new depth. And you, you can start collecting and then we'll pray. And I'm gonna sing a victory. I'm gonna sing a victory. The battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna sing a victory. I'm gonna sing a victory for the
as we close out the service, if you could just stand to your feet as I pray. Heavenly Father, I pray over the church, over each and every member under the sound of my voice. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit would just go with them this week, Lord God. Bless them. Cause them to excel and prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover your church in your blood. We cover their homes in their going out and their coming in. Let them be protected, safe, and blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Give somebody a big hug before you leave. God bless you, church. You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Yeah.